This sounds even too crazy for the crazies who govern us. But Dutch farmers are to be forced to sell their farms to the government and get out of the farming business. Yes, yes, you'd think it is too crazy to be true, but it's not too crazy because our government consists of a bunch of inhumane, greedy liars and thieves. So it's very much what we are dealing with right now. And uh, well, the protests that the Dutch farmers have been putting up since the summer have not changed their minds because obviously, like I said, these people are thieves and liars and they have their eyes on these farmers' land. So what they did is they came up with a new report in response to the protest, so to say, and instead of changing anything, they just changed the tone. So now they are pushing through, they are ramping it up, and actually the outcome of the new uh, report is worse. So like you said, they are going to expropriate, forcefully buy out 600 farms in the next year. But it sounds a little nicer mm. in the way that it's written in the little text. So that's it. Um, I, I really can't say anything else about it. It, it. it is theft. They are taking away these people's property. They are taking away their lives. They are taking away businesses that have been in Dutch families for centuries sometimes, and people are becoming desperate. Uh, we had a farmer last week, 43-year-old man who killed himself because he said he couldn't take it anymore, and he's not the only one. There are countless of examples like him. That's heartbreaking. A 43-year-old farmer kills himself uh, because of the government's determination basically to kill Dutch farming. When, when the state buys 600 farms, what's it going to do? And, and there's a similar uh, program in the UK and various other countries. What, what, but what is the Dutch government going to do with 600 farms? Well, like they say, of course, that it's because of a nitrogen crisis, which is completely manufactured and made up. We don't have a nitrogen crisis. But what we do have in the Netherlands is a housing crisis because our government lets in over 100,000 migrants a year, approximately. So obviously our population is growing and it's not because the Dutch native people are having a ton of babies. We all know that. So mm. these people need to live somewhere and there is no space left in the Netherlands. So what will they need to do? They will need to seize some of the land of these farmers in order to house new Dutch people, <laughs> the newcomers of, of our country. So that is what this is really about. And of course, there's also the element of them, of our elites, not wanting us to have an independent or control over our food supply. And they obviously also don't want us to eat meat. So the farmers are standing in the way of their plans, and that's why they are being targeted right now. But we have to stop uh, engaging in this narrative. Like I said, there is no nitrogen crisis. We have to stop even entertaining mm. the thought. Well, even if there were a, nit a so-called nitrogen crisis, I mean, uh, or, the, or the bigger climate change things, I mean, would you trust the people who govern us uh, to be able to do anything about that? Right now, since the COVID came along, we haven't gone back to normal. Uh, Heathrow is kaput. The, 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 the baggage handling at Charles de Gaulle in Paris is, is outrageous. Uh, I just heard today that Montreal... Uh, is like seven weeks behind with uh, uh, getting its bags to you. So it's now early October. If you flew into Montreal in mid-August, there's a sporting chance they might have your suitcase uh, organized for collection. So why do guys, why do we, th these guys can't run basic things like airport baggage handling. Why would you think that Justin Trudeau or Liz Truss or Mark Rutter or any of these guys are going to be able to save the planet? They couldn't, they can't organize the most basic municipal functions. Of course they can't. And again, the Netherlands, such a tiny country, you know, all of this is completely arbitrary. It shows once again that the things that they say is not what they actually want or what they actually mean. This is nitrogen is just another crisis that they use to take away your rights, to take away in this case, not just your rights, but also your property. I can't stress this enough. Mm. We have a government that says everything that you worked for, that you own, your life, your livelihood, doesn't matter. I want it, and so I get it. You have nothing to say about it. Is that really what the free West is about? Is that what we want? Is that something that we should accept for any type of crisis that they can just create out of thin air? It's insane. 
and we should stand up against it. And we I did. really, I hope that the farmers will start doing it again. And they said they will, and I will support them 110%. What do your fellow Dutchmen make of this, though, Ava? We've just been looking at some footage of that boob of a prime minister of yours riding around on his bicycle, like uh, I think it was Queen Vel Wilhelmina used to do uh, a few years back, if I've got your Dutch queen sorted out in my head. Uh, I think mm -hmm. it was Wilhelmina used to ride around on her bicycle. Um, uh, and, and people, all the photographers around him, the, the heroes of the Dutch press, they're all smiling and joking and laughing and having a grand old time. Are the Dutch people on board with the appropriation of their farmers' land and livelihoods? No, inherently they are not, because they see that this is going to be a problem. And they will definitely, if they don't see it now, they will definitely see it soon. Because we're talking about our food supply. We're also talking, obviously, about energy prices that are going through the roof. So this winter could be hungry and cold for a lot of Dutch people. We're suddenly going to face serious poverty that's going to be lasting. But what I'm afraid of mm. is exactly those little minions that you saw walking around our prime minister that are going to tell the Dutch people that the farmers are the problem and that none of this, of course, mm. is the government's fault and that it's all a legitimate crisis that needs to be countered and that people like me are far-right conspiracy theorists who are trying to warn you for things that don't exist. <laughs> so that is what they are mm. doing. And, <laughs> and I have the most crazy examples of this. Uh, even the other day, which would be funny, Mark, because I know that you always love to call mm. me the milkmaid, right? Because that is what the Dutch yeah. press yeah. Uh, used to call me in response to the, uh, the things that I've said about the farmers protest. And now mm. a Dutch state funded medium has come forth and used that photo of mine that you sometimes put at the beginning of the show where I'm holding some yep. bottles of milk pr uh, protesting for our mm. farmers. And they said, mm. this girl is not just holding milk. She's holding a symbol of white supremacy. So that is what they do. <laughs> they come, they vilify us, they try to they try to put you in the in the bad corner of the spooky people, all the far right, all, all crazy. And that way they try to influence the public opinion on the farmers. And I think that our government counts on them for it. And they just try to take as much time as they can to stall it and to to have you know the, the image be changed about the farmers and about what they are doing, and that's how they always do it. That's their strategy, and I hope that our our Dutch people will see through it for once and will say, no, listen, you just don't touch people's property. Get out. Well, uh, if milk is a symbol of white supremacy, I would have thought char-broiled hamburgers would be a symbol of uh, black soup. Oh, there we are. There's our favorite. There we are. Hilversum milkmaid. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's code. That's white supremacy code right there. Take it off the air before we they, they complain to Ofcom about it. Uh, this this Hilversum milkmaid uh, has been sent to save the Netherlands. These are first world nations we're talking about, and people are going to be freezing and starving and dying because of the incompetence of guys like that bicycling nitwit in the Netherlands and, uh, and an awful lot of other governments around Europe and the rest of the West. Thank you. And that is a terrible... By the way, this 43-year-old farmer driven to suicide by these lunatics by these lunatics. They don't care. Thank you, Ava. It, it, it is almost great. is like that's they what care. they want. Per le vostre libere ricerche invito a scorrere le migliaia di video attraverso i link che trovate su indice alfabetico dal sito web www.tinelli.eu. Su questo canale YouTube avete anche l'incredibile raccolta di playlist suddivisa per tematiche. Le playlist le trovate anche su indice alfabetico contrassegnate da questo indicatore. Sempre a disposizione il risveglio a colori solo nel formato ebook, ma nella versione cartacea è solo in bianco e nero. Su questo canale, come sul secondo, mi comporto esattamente nello stesso modo di come esercita il regime in autocarica. Viene eliminato qualsiasi commento che non rientra nella mia narrativa delle scoperte fatte come libero ricercatore. Ma non impongo nulla. Ognuno è libero di eseguire e ripetere quanto proposto e scoprire la verità, oppure di lasciare il canale continuare a credere e crogiolarsi dentro il sistema di indottrinamento.